Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of my Tailwind CSS mini-series. Now in this video, we are going to be covering borders using Tailwind. Now as you know, um, borders in CSS have a you know quite a bit of customization. You can set obviously just a simple black border, but you can also give it styling, make it dotted, dashed. Um, you can give it colors, you can give it uh, roundness, border radius. Uh, so you know overall there are quite a few things you can do with borders and they can be used to create a variety of effects using websites basically. So um, we'll just be covering that using Tailwind. So to go ahead and start, as always, I will open up the Tailwind docs in case, um, or like, you know, either for if I don't remember anything or if I need to look something up, uh, you can always do this too. This is the official documentation, tailwindcss.com slash docs. Uh, it is linked in the description. And if you ever get stuck um, on anything, like even if you're trying to um, build stuff that's not in the scope of these tutorial series, um, you can literally come here to the Tailwind docs and search up anything you think. Um, that kind of relates to Tailwind overall. And you can, of course, say you wanted to build a nav bar in, in Tailwind. I'm getting a little bit off topic here, but like nav bar, Tailwind CSS, like, you know, you can come to these other, um, like this is a different website, not the same website, but like they have, you know, examples of how to create stuff. So, you know, at any time, just look it up if you don't know. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and get started now. I'm going to open up the index.html and hit go live to start up our server. Once that's all up and running, you can see we left off here. Uh, we were just basically talking about text styling in the previous episode. You know, like a bunch of text styles here. Let me um, try to make this a little bit smaller, or I can just collapse it. So yeah, there's like all these font serif, uh, italic, text opacity, text blue, uh, overflow. You know, I'm adding all of these cool stylings. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and delete these as to not confuse you um, to what like we're covering here. So in this video, we're going to be covering div, uh, borders, as I said, but you need a div in order to do that. So we're just going to create a simple div, uh, maybe background uh, blue 500. Uh, and then we're going to have to give it a width of maybe, you know, let's just give it a width and a height of 10 for now to figure out what that is for reference again. Kind of small, so let's add like um, 25 maybe. So yeah, we got a... Uh, Oh, was I, was that not the right thing? I think it might need to be, I forgot the specific in increments, let's see. Width, there's like specific increments that you can do. Um, oh, in four. So yeah, we'll do, instead of 25, we'll do 24. Um, and that should work. And yeah, that should be good. So um, we have this cool little blue box. And what I am also going to do is I'm going to go ahead and also add some margin, maybe uh, 16 all around. And that will just give us some spacing so we can see this thing. Um, and I am going to make this a little bit bigger. Let's make it 32. Perfect. So yeah, we have this blue box to start. And this is all uh, concepts that we've covered in previous episodes. To create a background, you do BG dash color and then dash to shade. Uh, and then uh, to do width and height, you just do W and H dash the kind of uh, tailwind units in width and height, and same with margin and padding. Um, so in this video, we're going to be getting into a couple of different uh, border topics. So in order to add a border, obviously, um, you're going to use the border class in CSS um, or HTML. And there are a couple of customizations you can add to this. So first, we're going to start off by typing border dash. And then as you can see, it actually has a bunch of suggestions for me. But for now, let's just do, um, let's do uh, eight. So um, first thing to notice is the border is kind of grayish by default. Um, so it, it might be a little bit hard to see. I'm going to zoom in a bit here uh, so you can see the border better. So there's this gray border that's eight wide across. And that's because, again, we specify the thickness here. If I put one here, it'll get, um, or two rather, it will become very small. You can barely see it here. I have to zoom in a lot more. But um, then we can make it four, make it slightly bigger. And then eight is where we had it before. This is an eight size border. Um, so then after you add thickness, you can actually make the borders only go to one side, for example. And you do that by adding another dash in between the sizing. Uh, and you can do top, right, bottom, or left. So for example, if we only wanted to have the border on top, eight, uh, kind of eight thick, then notice I just do border dash T dash eight. 
and now it's only on the top. Same thing with bottom, for example, or the left, or the right. And of course, if I wanted to be on all sides, I can just remove that altogether, and now it's on all four sides. So that's basically how you add a border with some thickness and some uh, siding. But of course, there are many other customizations, like the coloring especially, since you know I don't personally think this is very good color because it's kind of hard to see with the white background. So of course, we can just come here to border color on the docks. And again, like any question you have, just search it up, okay? So border, black, you know, gray. So this seems to be somewhat similar to the way we define background colors. So notice, again, we can add a border and then we can say um, blue. So same color as our background, but let's make it slightly lighter, like 200 instead of 500. And by adding that, notice now we have a blue background. If I put 100 here, it'll get even lighter. Maybe if I put 400, it'll be very close. Um, I think 300 may be a good midpoint. So yeah, now we have a blue border instead of gray. And this is much easier to see, especially when I zoom out. Now you can really see it, as opposed to when I removed this. And we just had border 8. You know, it's kind of hard because it's gray. So again, just border, and then the color, and then the shade. And that is how we add a colored border. Now to actually uh, mess with the border styling, there are a couple different... Um, options that we can use. We can use a solid, dash, dotted, double, and none. So let's go ahead and check out some of these. So again, we can add another border property. And notice, you can add as many of these border properties as you want. You're not restricted to only one, uh, if you hadn't already noticed. So border and then solid by default. So again, this is a solid border and it always has been. But if we actually change this to example dotted, this will now be a dotted border. And I'll zoom in a little bit more. Uh, so that you can see that. So this is a dotted border, you know, there's dots all around. Um, you could add it to be dashed, which would uh, create a dashed border, and this looks pretty cool. Like, I, I could actually see myself using a style somewhat similar to this. Um, and then, you know, there's a double border as well, which creates like this two kind of two lines. Um, one there, one there, and then there's transparent in between the two lines. So that's another different style. And then, of course, you can put border none, and that will just um, remove the styling um, of the border itself. Or you can just remove it like that. So that is how you do a border style. And again, if I'm going um, a bit fast or anything, of course, you can pause the video. But if not, if you do want to try these on your own, or if you want to try something else that I don't teach here, again, just come here to the docs, which are linked in the description, and just search up what you need. And then, um, so for the next topic, we're going to be covering uh, border radius. Now, for your, those who don't know what border radius is, it's generally adding a curve to the border. So it's not like a square, it's like a rounded square. Or if you add enough border radius, it could just become a circle. Um, so to add that, we're going to come here. And it's actually called a rounded. Um, it's called rounded is the uh, property. So you can add a rounded and then dash and then the size, SM. Uh, leaving it blank is, is just regular. And then MD, LG, XL, you know, the same sizing kind of. Uh, properties that we've seen previous in this series. So if I add this rounded, and then I come back here to our dock, and if I save this, it will get some rounded corners. If I zoom in here, you can see it's slightly rounded. It's only, it's pretty subtle overall, like especially when you're here zoomed out to regular size, but um, it is there, it has a rounded corner. And of course, if I create um, a rounded MD, that'll round it a little bit more. Um, and then let me just zoom back out here. Rounded LG will round it even more. Um, and then, of course, you can like do rounded 3XL, and that will um, really round it. That'll Now that's kind of like a badge, a rounded square. And then there's another um, value here called rounded full, if you can see here, which is basically, um, it basically makes it into a circle, so it fully rounds the thing. So as soon as I save that, now it's a circle. And because the reason is, is rounded means it will not touch the corner, and it will kind of like round around it. So yeah. Um, and then, of course, you can actually apply the borders on only specific sides of your div if you want. The way you do that is instead of saying um, rounded full, uh, you can add again this middle property T um, B L R to kind of specify the size that this applies to. So first, I'm going to switch this back to 3XL. So um, it's a little bit more, you know, it's not subtle, but you can see that it's still square. Um, and then I'm going to only apply this on the top, for example. So if I put a T, notice now, look at the bottom. These are rounded here, but the bottoms are still squares or just are, you know, sharp edges. And then, of course, you can set it to R to make it on the right. Um, 
L to put it on the left. But um, overall, this is how you round certain sides. Now, um, there are, you can only, um, or like using this, you can only round like one side, like the whole left side. But what if you only wanted to round like the top left side and leave this side um, kind of square as well? Well, you can just do that. You can do TL to do top left, and that will only round the top left corner. And of course, you can do like RL to do the right, oh wait, no, RL doesn't make sense, uh, BL. We'll put the bottom left corner and then uh, TR for the top right and so on. So that's how you can kind of uh, round out certain corners. And of course, if I put full here again, you'll see the full effect that it fully rounds out that corner. And that's how you can create cool shapes like this uh, using CSS. So that's overall pretty cool. Um, and uh, a minor note here, you do not need to have a border in order to use the rounded property. Same, you know, within CSS, you do not have to have a border to use border radius. Um, the rounded property just rounds out the entire thing. So I'm going to remove the border here really quick to show you that. So now there's no border, but using rounded TR full still creates that rounded shape. And of course, if I change it to top, or if I just change it to nothing, it will just round it out. And that's how you can make a circle using a div um, and the rounded property. So um, I believe that was pretty much all I had to show for this video. It's pretty short, um, talking about borders. But um, you know, in the next video, we're just going to keep kind of touching on these various Tailwind CSS properties. Um, overall, I hope you're seeing at this point that Tailwind CSS really allows us to um, write things out really quickly. Like, um, I'm going to quickly, you know, I'm, I'm just, just for comparison, I'll show you like writing this thing out um, using like, using regular CSS, I would do a div and then give it an ID of like, um, main or something. Um, and then here in our CSS, we would have to select main, and then we'd have to go background, uh, background color, and then we'd have to do blue, and then I'd have to find the specific shade of blue that I'm using here. So that's even more painful. Um, you know, of course, width, and remember, uh, one of these units is four pixels. So this, 30, this would be 32 times four, or 128 pixels. And then height, same, 128 pixels. Um, and then margin would be 16. So this will be 64 pixels. And then border radius. Um, border radius would be uh, 999 pixels uh, because rounded full sets it to 9999. Um, and just doing that, yeah, we get the same kind of thing, but even then, uh, the shade of blue is off um, and I would have to find that. But yeah, that's like, this is a quick comparison, like um, versus if I was writing this without having to explain what I was doing, I would just do BG blue 500, uh, W-32, H-32, M-16, uh, rounded dash full and boom. Just like that, we get a third one. Like it's so much quicker. And then on top of that, it's so much cleaner to have this one line as opposed to these five, six lines for every single time we want to do this. So yeah, no, that's just pretty much another demonstration of kind of the value of Tailwind CSS. So if you want to see more videos like this, you can check out the playlist, which is linked in the description. I'm currently uploading daily. Um, and uh, I've, I think there's quite a few more tutorials planned for this series because Tailwind is quite a big library and there's you know a few things there's many things that you can kind of do with it and it offers you all the basic tools so yeah if you enjoyed this video uh, please consider giving it a thumbs up subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications whenever i post new videos thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one